Welcome everyone to Get Over It. Thanks for joining me live or if you're listening to this on the replay. This is what I do in the evenings. I love to listen to music. So. This is old school. Okay, 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 okay. Welcome everyone to Gut Over It. I'm Dr. Viviana Samwa. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I'm a gastroenterologist in Katy, Texas. I uh, trained at Johns Hopkins uh, in practice for about 10 years, and I'm also a functional medicine provider. I am really interested in functional gastroenterology, but I welcome all patients and see all patients. So I'm again on this 30 day challenge in the month of February of um, doing one GI topic every night at nine o'clock when I put my kids to bed. And we started yesterday, today is day two. And today we are gonna be talking about dysphagia, which is otherwise known as uh, trouble swallowing. So let me just confirm that everyone can hear me Glad to see everyone on. I want to make sure everyone can hear me and then we'll we'll gut right into it. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. So, so dysphagia actually means uh, trouble swallowing, but most commonly a lot of people will experience trouble swallowing for simple and common reasons. Like if you are eating too fast, um, swallowing big chunks. Um, if you are not, if you are talking and trying to swallow at the same time, laughing and trying to swallow at the same time, and also laying down and trying to swallow at the same time. So those are common reasons why you may experience some shortness of uh, some uh, trouble swallowing. But those are reversible with just lifestyle modifications. Like our grandma said, don't talk and eat at the same time. There's a reason why we're not supposed to do that. So okay. But as a GI doc, when I hear dysphagia, it takes me back to my fellowship days where at 3 a.m. I'll get a call from the emergency room position on call that someone has a piece of chicken. It's usually a piece of turkey stuck and they can't swallow and they're salivating and they're in pain and I have to get up. And at that time, I lived in Baltimore at Hopkins. I have to get up from my warm, cozy bed, put all my clothes on at three in the morning, uh, shovel snow, most likely, um, if it's in the winter time, and then drive up to the emergency room at Hopkins and, you know, take care of this patient at 3 a.m. And so most of the time when I talk to the patient, they say, you know, doc, I've had this swallowing issue for years. And in my head, I think, no way, gut over it. Please type in gut over it in the comments box just to just to second what I'm saying. Gut over it. You've had this issue for years. You've never told your GI dog. You've never told your doc about this. No, I just didn't think it was that important. And now they have a piece of chicken stuck somewhere. And we have to do an endoscopy, go in, fetch it out with all the other stuff so they can be comfortable. They, they Usually they have chest pain, they're hyper, they're salivating, they're uncomfortable. And uh, once we get it out, we're good. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the different cause. That's one cause. I mean, that's the sort of the scenario of um, dysphagia and issue swallowing. But I wanna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different causes and why some people have issues with swallow. So, I brought out my nerdy um, anatomy book and I was gonna get all nerdy and into it and show everyone, but then I realized you probably don't wanna see this stuff. <laughs> I think it's very interesting, but I thought, well, let me just show. So that's, you know, from the top, we see the teeth and then we see the food pipe, the vocal cords, the upper part of the esophagus, and then the lower part of the esophagus as it gets into the stomach. And so this is the upper part, 
And there's like a little bar here called the cricopharyngeal bar. So this is, you can have upper esophageal trouble swallowing. So it can be like dysphagia that we call oropharyngeal, or it can be dysphagia that is throughout the rest of the esophagus and sometimes happening over here, okay? So that's as much as I'm gonna show because I don't think you guys are gonna find that very interesting. But when people say stuffed food is getting stuck, very often they'll point to an area that's up here or down here. And almost 80% of the time, the area they're pointing to is not at all connected to where the food is actually getting stuck. So they're, they're showing us an area here but the food is actually getting stuck lower down when we actually check. So there's no correlation. So don't always think that you've got a blockage here because that's where you're sensing it. The blockage could actually be much lower down. So that's, that's interesting. And um, that helps us sometimes when we're talking to patients. So if you've had issues swallowing with swallow, there are a couple questions that your doctor should ask you. We want to know how long it's been going on for, what, what kind of foods or liquids. It could be trouble swallowing with liquids alone. We want to know whether it's hot or cold beverages. We want to know where you feel the food, where you think the food is getting stuck. Then we also want to ask about reflux. Are you having any reflux symptoms? Um, are you having chest pain with these symptoms? And are you experiencing any weight loss? That's a big question because when we think of weight loss, we either think two things, either there's a cancer or this person can't actually um, swallow enough to get food down into the stomach and digest, okay? So remember, two types of areas that can contribute to trouble swallowing, oropharyngeal, so that's the upper part, and then esophageal. All right, let's talk about oropharyngeal a little bit. So that heart has a lot of muscles. And sometimes when there are neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis, a stroke, someone who just had a stroke, spinal cord injury, Parkinson's, you lose, unfortunately, the strength through the spinal cord that innervates these muscles, and you can't constrict very well and relax very well. So as you know, the food pipe sits very close to the airway, and the muscles are supposed to, you know, when you swallow, all the muscles kind of constrict, so it closes up that food, the airway, so food doesn't go into the airway, and then the esophageal muscles kind of relax and allow food entry. So there's sometimes an issue with just the muscle tone and strength, and we can see, you know, people who have, especially older people who have neurological issues suffer from trouble swallowing, okay? So if you understand that, please type in the comments, um, trouble swallowing or just swallow just so that I know you guys are paying attention, okay? So the second type of trouble swallowing is more esophageal. This is kind of my turf, right? The GI docs. This area can, uh, we can see issues with swallow related to reflux disease, okay? Uh, we can see issues related to um, motility issues and we'll talk about that motility is basically just the movement and the food pipe okay so i just don't want to miss any information we can see issues related to just spasm and that's what happens if you ha 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 and try and swallow if you laugh and you try and swallow or you lay down and you try and swallow it's going to get stuck somewhere so that's where we'll usually see spasm occurring which comes with a lot of chest pain so that's an issue with reflux, the reason why you experience trouble swallowing with reflux is because, unfortunately, you are refluxing acid into the food pipe. The mouth and saliva should be alkaline. That's like a pH of around 7 or 8. Now, the stomach is acidic. It's meant to be acidic. It's naturally acidic. That's, it needs acid to do its job. So when you are actually refluxing acid into an area that's not exposed to acid, doesn't like acid, it starts to spasm and that spasm feels like, you know, you can't swallow, like something is getting stuck. But very often when we fix the uh, diet, lifestyle, and we sometimes have to put patients on medication, it all goes away like, like magic, Oof, you can swallow well again. So that's interesting. 
Um, there's another type of uh, esophagitis, which is, so we know that GERD, so, okay, this is, this is the deal, guys. Heartburn is a symptom of reflux. Reflux is a fancy term, is a, is a the layman's term, or sort of the easy term for GERD. GERD is just a fancy term, which means gastroesophageal reflux. So basically, GERD, the doctors will say, or people who are really in the know will say GERD. And then reflux is basically the process, right? That's your refluxing stuff up. And then heartburn is a symptom of reflux. So sometimes patients will be like, I'm like, I'll tell patients, you have GERD. They're like, no, I have heartburn. I, I'm like, okay, but you have GERD. They're like, no, I have, I'm like, it's the same thing. It's just a fancy term for GERD. So it's just symptoms and what we call things. So, so we talked about GERD, but something else that can cause esophagitis, which is sort of inflammation of the food pipe, is an entity called, now if y'all can repeat this, you guys are awesome, eosinophilic esophagitis. Can I hear? Who can say it? Who can type it? Who can spell it right? If you can spell eosinophilic esophagitis, please type it in the comments box for me, please. Let me see who's typing it. Maybe someone's typing it right. Type it in the comments box. It's otherwise known as EOE. So this is a, some kind of inflammation that usually occurs from food allergies. So we'll see it in a lot of people who suffer from food allergies, from asthma, from you know just hives, people who are, who are what we call atopic, they tend to have a lot of allergic reactions. So eosinophilic, eosinophilic esophagitis leads to a lot of spasm, especially when you've just eaten the food, but over time it leads to strictures that form in the food pipe. And so these are strictures that are really mechanical, like we have to go in and dilate and sort of release, tear and release this, the, the strictures, okay? So eosinophilic esophagitis can cause um, dysphagia. Foreign bodies, I've sometimes seen in people who wear dentures, like a piece of the denture will get stuck somewhere, and so they'll have it stuck in the food pipe, and it almost always feels like they can't swallow, there's something stuck there. So that will also cause trouble swallowing. And just like yesterday, I found a friend. Yesterday I talked to I talked about Joy Milne, the pay, the, the nurse, the Scottish nurse who could just through someone's breath detect diseases like Alzheimer's and uh, Parkinson's, etc. Well, we're not going to talk about joy today, but I got a lot of questions about joy um, over overnight. Everyone, well, where is she? Maybe she can smell some of my friend's breath. I think they have some kind of disease. So that was interesting. But there is a an entity when you have had reflux for a long time, you start developing a um, fibrous, a, a benign fibrous tissue around the end of the food pipe. And this actually has a name called Schatzky ring. Hey, it's so nice to see so many people on, awesome. It's called Schatzky ring. And so I found a new friend, his name is Robert Schatzky. And he was actually, so this, this ring is named after him because he discovered it. He is a German, he was a German American radiologist. And so, you know, he would see all these patients for dysphagia he lived like in the 1940s or something like that. I think, yes, 1940s. And he was, you know, so he had to, I'll just, I'll tell you the story. So he trained in Germany. He was uh, a, a Jewish uh, doctor, trained there, highly respected. And then when everything happened with the World War, he had to move over to the U.S. and then lived in, I believe, in Boston and was also a very reputable doctor there. And he is the one who coined, who identified this ring that he would see on, on radiology studies at the end of the food pipe, um, almost like a fibrous ring that would just scar itself until the ring until the food pipe closed. And so it was named after him Schatzky ring. So if you can spell Schatzky, Schatzky ring, go ahead and type it in the comments. I will be so, so impressed, so impressed. So it's not Schlotzky. I know there's a, there's a, there's a, sandwich or something please called Schlotsky. No, no, this is Schatzky ring, okay? So it's benign, um, but this we usually see as a result of reflux that goes on for a while, undiagnosed, untreated, and so you'll develop this scarring and very often we have to go in again and dilate, stretch it, tear it, tear it up, 
so that you can actually eat that piece of chicken and see it go down. Okay, what else do I have? Oh, infections. Sometimes we'll see people who have trouble swallowing from infection. So herpes can get into the food pipe through whatever mechanism, I won't go there. But candida, also, we see a lot of patients who are, have diabetes or who are using those uh, steroid inhalers for asthma uh, will develop candida because steroids will increase your risk of candida and yeast formation. So, you know, these are people who will be like, well, I'm taking Nexium, I'm taking Omeprazole, it's not working. You have to get scope, tell your doctor about it, gut over it, tell your doctor about it, and they have to do endoscopy. And when they see the candida, we can actually see it like a white coating on the esophagus, send it to biopathology, diagnosis confirmed, and you get treatment with antifungals, poof, like magic, gone. So that's important as well. And let me see, mm -hmm. I was gonna talk about uh, motility disorders. We've kind of talked about, well, the one thing we didn't talk about was kind of the tumor part, right? This can be a cancer, right? So if you have a progressive obstruction, like trouble swallowing, initially maybe just to liquids, and then you notice that it's progressing to solids as well, and you're losing weight, your reflux symptoms are getting worse, and you are over 60, 65, gut over it, tell your doctor right away. You need an immediate and urgent endoscopy to make sure that this isn't cancer, okay? So let's segue into motility disorders and I will end there. So motility disorders are really high and are difficult to diagnose. So these are people who say, listen, I can't swallow. It's not all the time, but usually it could be to liquids, um, very often cold liquids will cause spasm, right? Um, and, or sometimes it could just be progressive. It's to liquid and solids. And when um, we do an upper endoscopy, we don't find anything. It looks pristine, it looks perfect. So we need to do some additional testing, right? And the best test to actually look for motility or disorders of the food pipe is something called a manometry study. So that's a test where we actually put a catheter through your nose and this catheter is as thin as a, maybe a, um, a little a wire, a long wire, a thin wire, a very thin wire. And that's inserted through your nose and it has little holes that are pressure, pressure monitors. And so we actually put it into your nose, have you swallow, and we can connect it to a, a, um, a high resolution measuring device that actually tells us what the pressures are in the different parts of the food pipe. And achalasia is a diagnosis when the pressures in the lower esophagus, I don't wanna bring the book out again, you guys know what I mean. In the lower esophagus is so tight, like the lower esophageal, what we call that sphincter, is just so contracted that it won't let anything go through. So what happens is that you just start, you swallow and things just start accumulating, 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 and you can't swallow anymore or you're vomiting now. So that is the diagnosis of achalasia, which requires surgery. For the most part, sometimes Botox, sometimes medication works, but it's not always the case, okay? Um, other things that will result in issues with motility of the food pipe include autoimmune conditions like scleroderma, where everything is almost scarred down and tight in the food pipe, so it doesn't move well. Um, we see people who've had radiation therapy develop issues there from scarring as well. And I think the, the oddest thing I've seen is um, people who ingested either acid or lye, either by accident when they were kids or intentionally, unfortunately, and they've developed some scarring in the food pipe and there are issues there. So those are some of the main reasons why um, we would see people with normal esophagus on endoscopy, but still reporting swallowing issues. It's not always reflux. So we need to do the additional testing to figure things out. So in terms of dysphagia, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about the most common causes. We've talked about achalasia, motility disorders like achalasia being a cause. We also talked about some of the testing, endoscopy. Um, there's another test called a barium swallow. So that's the test that Dr. Robert Shotsky was doing where he saw those rings. That's a radiology test where they have you drink a liquid and kind of see um, how the liquid runs down the esophagus. 
And then finally, we talked about upper endoscopy, which is the procedures that I perform, as well as um, manometry testing. In terms of treatment, well, we treat the root cause, right? So if it is reflux, we focus, at our practice, we focus on diet and nutrition and lifestyle. We know that works. Um, if we have to give you um, medications for um, acid reflux, we do. Uh, we talk about allergies. And so if there are foods to avoid, we uh, try and do some elimination testing. And finally, um, if we need to stretch and tear by doing dilatation, we do that as well um, in the right setting. So again, uh, this evening, February 2nd, we were talking about dysphagia on gut over it. My name is Dr. Asamwa. I'm a gastroenterologist in Katy, Texas. Uh, I am accepting new patients. If you have any issues with dysphagia, please don't hesitate to talk to your GI or seek the help of a professional uh, like myself. Uh, you can visit us at uh, www.drvivianasamwa.com. And uh, I look forward to tomorrow where I will be talking about belching and hiccups. So anything that has to do with the diaphragm. We are slowly working our way down and I'll make sure that all questions are answered. So if you enjoy this evening, please um, hit on the like button, hit on the love button, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.